Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking today at a book from Oxford University Press. The title is Friction. It's got a subtitle, How Radicalisation Happens to Them and Us. This is the book here. It's written by two people, Clark McCauley and Sophia Moskalenko. Um, I think it's a very good book. It's 240 pages long, very light. Very good index at the back when you're looking at the information that you might be trying to retrieve. There's some very useful bibliographical uh, hints in the, at the end of each chapter, looking further, they call it, on this occasion. But the book itself is of interest to a very wide readership, in my view, uh, coming as it does at a time in history where we have a massive amount of uh, terrorist threats in various parts of the world. Obviously, the most recent formidable one was 9-11. Let me say a little bit about what we've written in our review. My wife Elizabeth and I have written this review and we've given it a title. Terrorists. Uh, why do they do it? What can we do about it? And this is what we say. What sets ordinary people, mild-mannered students for instance, on the path to radicalisation and ultimately to terrorism? How does one find out an answer? Or is there an answer? Uh, as the authors uh, Clark McCauley and Sophia Moskalenka have rather challengingly put it, quote, focusing on them, the terrorists, their motivations, is not enough. Focusing on us is not enough. Focusing on the dynamics of conflict over time is essential, which is exactly what this book and the authors set out to do with this intellectually sparkling statement of modical, ra uh, modern radicalism. Now, both of these uh, people are psychologists and consultant to the United States Department of Homeland Security and they're acknowledged experts of course in the field. Extrapolating from their extensive research they identify 12 mechanisms of ra radicalization through which they assert unexceptional people are motivated to, to perpetrate exceptional violence. I'm afraid this is very much what's happened in history so it's repeating itself. Ideology, they claim, is not necessarily a prime factor in this process. It emerges as more as an, of an excuse for violence rather than its root cause. And the wealth of specific case uh, material here touches on a number of the big incidents we've had. I've mentioned them earlier. There's a wide-ranging analysis of terrorism going back to Imperial Russia in the late 1800s. You've got a lot of case histories which are very fascinating from the point of view of the historian, the politician and the lawyer. It's an interesting aspect of this book that um, there are personal experiences of individuals which are examined alongside the dynamics of groups from which most terrorism seems to uh, emanate. Lone wolf terrorism from the alienated individual is the exception, of course, although individual terrorists apparently acting alone present a growing problem. There's a detailed chapter on the late Osama bin Laden which traces his what's described as trajectory into terrorism from shy gangly youth from a privileged background to the most sought after international public enemy number one of our time. This was published uh, earlier in 2001 and I'm doing this re review towards the middle of the year. And it's very topical and it reflects uh, on how sudden events can suddenly change situations. Um, Bin Laden, as this book is being reviewed, is now no more. He's, uh, of course, got many thousands of uh, victims who are the grieving su survivors of what he got up to. And obviously some of them will have achieved some form of grim satisfaction of closure. But the issue itself still remains. So let me sum up by saying that friction is a riveting read, especially for social scientists, criminologists, and in my view, historians and lawyers, not to mention the general readership. Those wishing to do more research will find the bibliographical details in the index very helpful. And what I would say is it's probably a good investment, this book, onto why they do it and what we can do about it. But it doesn't profess and can't actually give us any solutions. However, it's a very exciting reading for our time and something that I think people will find very interesting. Thank you very much to all concerned for producing it. Bye-bye.